Hello and welcome back to Mythical Meeples. Once more, we'll be returning to the Forbidden Island. Today, I'll be playing as both explorer and diver in this cooperative game. And we will be playing at a legendary level. This is the highest level for Forbidden Island. So you, as you can see, you start off with novice. Novice, normal, elite, and legendary. Seems the game could be over very, very quickly. So start off. Need to turn over my six tiles. So not a good draw. Whispering Garden, which is over here. Temple of the Moon. Temple of the Sun. Coral Palace, Howling Garden, over here, and Crimson Forest. So they're quite spread out, which isn't good. And five of the six cards that I've started with have got the icons on, which we need to win. Two of them are the gardens with the air, two of them are the temples with the earth. Those of you who watched my last video know that I play following the normal rules except for the treasure deck where I split the piles into three, then shuffle a water rising card into each separate pile and then stack them on top of each other so that each water rise comes throughout the deck instead of all at once. A bit like if for those of you who've played Pandemic. So up first is going to be the Explorer. Unfortunately, they are right out of the way up here. So I think my best course of action is to use the helicopter lift to fly them over here so they can do something useful. Flip that one, that one, and that one because the Explorer can move and or shore up diagonally. The Explorer is one of my favourite characters in the game and I'm really glad to be using them today. Next up, that's there go. Need to draw some treasures. So we've got water, another water, another air. Uh, so now we've got two waters, an air and the sandbags. It's okay. Um, sandbags could be really useful given how it started. So then we've got Silver Gate, Iron Gate and Breaker's Bridge. Uh, Cliffs of Abandon, sorry, not Breaker's Bridge. Cliffs of Abandon. Silver Gate and Iron Gate. So up the top here, I'm not too worried about that getting flooded because none of those have the icons on. Again, same the bot down at the bottom here, but we've got icons round here. So this middle bit is the most important bit to keep from flooding. Um, I know it's quite hard to see on the screen, but I'm hoping you can make it out. In fact, what we're going to do is I'm just going to take you in very slowly just so you can get an idea of what the board looks like. So yeah, you've got Fool's Landing on the left here. You've got all of these ones at the top that aren't very important but probably hurt later on. Then you've got both fire and one of the waters and the air over here. So that's the explorer's turn down. Onto the diver, who once again can't really do much because we've ended up in not a great spot. So they're going to move, move, and actually, uh, so I can move through flooded tiles. So we move there and then move there and flip that one. So the explorer, unlike other characters, can move through one or more adjacent flooded and or missing tiles for one action. They must end their turn on a tile. And then they're just going to flip the Coral Palace. So draw a helicopter lift and the earth symbol. So very spread mix again. Breaker's Bridge. Watchtower and Misty Marsh. So Breaker's Bridge and Watchtower. Misty Marsh is up there. So nothing too dangerous, but we got rid of most of the bad piles. 
early on. So they can't really do much if they move their shore both of those up. I don't have enough anything to play at the moment. Draw two treasure tiles. So it's not looking good. I know that both of those, the uh, has come up. The Coral Palace has come up. I think both of the Coral the Palaces have come up. And the Garden, so... Whichever way we go about this is not a good situation to be in, so... I think because they're going to go for Earth, I'm going to get rid of one of the Water ones. It's, it's hard to know this early on which ones to go for. Cave of Shadows. And you see that just about down the bottom there. Hang on, let me move over long. Fool's Landing and the Copper Gate. So that's up there. Fool's Landing is over here. And Cave of Shadows is down here. So I've got my sandbags in the bag. <laughs> uh, in the bank. Just to... Um, sorry, that pun got me. Right, so let's flip over the Howling Garden. Sure that up. Move around to the Cape of Shadows and shore that up. Not much we can do right now. I really need to get that over onto the Explorer. And obviously with the Water Eyes, it's not the way to do it. Drew another Water Tile card. So now I need to shuffle everything up. And then draw... Uh, still free. Alright, so just need to move this up to here. Um, I think a good idea would be to sandbags falls landing, just in case it comes up. And then we've got our three cards ready. Howling Gardens, nicely out of the way. Copper Gate is gone. Put that up there. And Breaker's Bridge is back underwater. It's not too bad, not ideal. And it's the Explorer now. So I think... I think I'm not going to focus on is it water, I said. Water. Uh, earth and air we want. So I'm going to shore those two up. Move to the diver. Draw my two cards. And we've got another sandbag. So let's get rid of the water. And then draw our three cards. Temple of the Sun. Whispering Garden. And Temple of the Moon and oh lovely. Glad I've got that sandbags. So they're up. I think I'm gonna give that to them, which means I have to discard a card or I can just play that. Shore up Whispering Garden or Temple of the Sun. So I've got one more Whispering Garden. Move here and shore up Temple of the Sun. Oh look, a water rice. Fire, which isn't helpful. So we're going up here again. Now we're into four. Um, there's not a lot in this pile, if you want to have a look. You've got both the Earth Temples and both the Air Gardens. So this is probably going to prove pretty brutal. I've got no shoring up I can do. Um, plus side I've got both of these. Unlikely to draw another water rise simply because of how we do it. Temple of the Sun. And you can't see this. Temple of the Sun, which we just shored up. Breaker's Bridge. Temple of the Moon, which go under. And Whispering Garden, which we just shored up. So the next card is the Howling Garden. So Whispering Garden. Temple of the Moon's gone, Breaker's Bridge gets flooded, and Temple of the Sun gets flooded. So that was the Diver, so back over to the Explorer. So they're going to move here, and simply give the Diver both the Air ones, and discard the water to do so. Draw two new treasure cards, we drew another air, we drew a fire. And then we need to flip over four still. 
I'm hoping this is clear enough for you on the video. Howling Garden, which we knew was coming. Cliffs of Abandon. Crimson Forest. And Watchtower. So Watchtower gets flooded. Crimson Forest gets flooded. Howling Garden gets destroyed. And Cliffs of Abandon gets destroyed. Not going well. So you may have noticed I've just put down these little tokens. I use those when I'm using the diver just to help me remember where the tiles were. Otherwise it can get a little confusing because their ability means they can move through missing tiles. But if you use, say, this half of the board, it's hard to know where the tiles are without having some sort of marker down. And it's now the diver's turn. So I think, ideally I need to get them the extra air symbol. And I need to get the explorer the extra air symbol. So I think their go is just going to consist of shoring this up, moving here, and shoring up the Whispering Garden because I need to make sure they stay in play. <laughs> so of course we draw the earth and water, so I'm going to discard fire and water. And then we need four cards. Coral Palace, Cave of Shadows, let's flip those over. Two more cards. Misty Marsh, which I think goes under, and the Iron Gate, which goes under. And then we need to put our tokens in. So as you can see, part of the board's missing there. Hence the tokens. That was the Diver's turn. So Explorer. I need to shore. Oh, the Cave of Embers is pretty inaccessible right now. So I need to shore this up, move to the diver, give them the air symbol. This means I need to discard something, so I think I'm going to play the helicopter lift because I need that. It just gives me the extra action on my next turn, even though it's a bit of a waste. Done those four. So Fool's Landing, Silver Gate, Cave of Embers, and Phantom Rock. Phantom Rock. Fool's Landing, Silver Gate goes. So that was the Explorer's turn. So the Diver going to collect the earth symbol, air symbol, sorry. That's that one done. Um, what was the next port of call? Other than sticking another token down there. Uh, so that's one action. I think I need to move back. So that's two. And give the explorer the earth thing. I really hope I don't draw four sanding again now. Fire and air. Can't draw full landing this turn. Gold Gate, which we're on. Bronze Gate, Lost Lagoon, and Observatory. One, two, three, four. So we've got quite a maneuverable group, so flooding here and here isn't too much of an issue. Diver can go for it. Explorer can go across it. I think the Tidal Palace hasn't come up, and I'm not sure. Twilight Hollow? Or is it Genes of Deception? I think these three tiles haven't come up, so that's good for the water. So that was the Diver. So first action, flip that, move here, collect the Earth Marker. So now we just need Fire and Water. Helpfully, we drew earth and water ice. So we are now up to four. That's all three water rises gone now. And then I need to shuffle up this pile. Still on four cards. 
So Phantom Rock, Crimson Forest, Bronze Gate, and Whispering Garden. Fortunately, we've got the air one, so the Whispering Garden isn't an issue. Bronze Gate is gone. Crimson Forest is gone. And Phantom Rock is gone. That was brutal. On the plus side, the diver is getting stronger the longer we play because they can move pretty much anywhere on the board now. So that was, I can't even remember who that was now. Oh, that was the um, Explorer. They're gone. Um, there's not much, I feel like I keep saying this, not a lot can be done right now. Can move. I don't need the air anymore. I think the best thing flip this one over, swim. So here and flip this one. Possibly end on that one. That one might be better to end on. Um, we need water. And we need, I suppose that'll do. And then we need, so we get the observatory, Fool's Landing, Cave of Shadows, and Lost Lagoon. So Lost Lagoon is lost. Cave of Shadows goes under, Fool's Landing goes under, and the observatory gets destroyed. Which is a shame because I could have shot it out next time. Okay. So I have a very small space for the Explorer to play with. Just put these in before I forget about them. They're just little wooden tokens. There's nothing special about them. I'll see if I can get the camera to focus on them. Yeah, just a very, very simple, small wooden token. You could use anything. You don't have to use anything at all if you don't want to, though. Uh, it's just for my brain. So Explorer. Shore that up, shore that up, and there's probably not much point in them moving from where they are. They're covering six tiles at the moment. If they move here, they're still covering six tiles, but I don't need that. So yeah, I think they're just going to stay where they are. Fire, and oh, fire. So the diver needs to get to them to give them a fire. And we need four more cards. So what have we got? We've got the Coral Palace, which the diver is on. The Watchtower, which is down here and gone. Breaker's Bridge, which is down here and gone. Temple of the Sun, which they are on. So board is getting small very, very quickly. I need to shuffle that pile up in a minute, the treasure cards. Um, may as well just do my go first because it's simpler. So I think probably need to shore this up. Swim over here and pass over the fire for them. So time to flood things. There are five cards left. So we get the Gold Gate, the Cave of Embers, so that gets destroyed. That's not really an issue. Genes of Deception and Twilight Hollow. Oh, so I need to make sure the Explorer has a path back. I'm not sure if I've just doubled up there, but you know. So I think, what symbols have we got? We've got earth and water, air. So I need to make sure the water, so I think I'm gonna flip this one over. So that's my first action, move here. Second action, collect the fire symbol. It's the third action. So it's teamwork, it's working well. Helicopter lift, so I need to make sure I keep on the end game and the air symbol we need is the water ones right now. So what do we get? Tidal Palace, 
then we need to shuffle everything up. Two, four, six, eight. We have nine tiles left out of our starting 24. Um, five of them are turned over. Did I just, I did just do one. So the Tidal Palace are gone, Genes of Deception are gone, and the Temple of the Sun, Great Thunder. So I need to make sure, if I can, to leave the pathway back. The Diver's fine, the Diver can go anywhere, from anywhere. Probably want to get them doing the water, because they don't have to worry so much about getting back. So one action, two action, I think if I, I'm going to end there actually, probably slightly more useful. Draw a water rise, draw an earth symbol. So Temple of the Sun gets flooded again. Oh, we need to push this up to five now. <laughs> so that's the first one. Twilight Hollow. Cave of Shadows, Fool's Landing, and the Coral Palace. So one, two, three, four. So the Explorer is going to have to shore up the Coral Palace, move there, and shore up Fool's Landing because I, there's a good chance I'm going to draw them. So they get a water and an air background already to this bit. So Whispering Garden goes under, Gold Gate goes under. I've accidentally flown away. No, I haven't. Five tiles left. So it's a good chance right now of losing. I don't think I can win. One, two, three. So the Cave of Shadows goes under. This one goes under, which really leaves me on Fool's Landing, and the Coral Palace gets wet. This is where the Diver becomes really, really strong, because unlike the Pilot, they can do their thing as many times in the turn as they want. So they could whiz about all over the place, but it doesn't really do them much good because I don't have the things to make them good. So their turn is move there, fly over, swim over here, do that. But potentially I could move here, do my thing, move back if I had the right cards, which I don't. Cool. Sandbags and the helicopter. I'll just discard the earth symbol. So flooding. So we know these two are going to come up. Twilight Hollow and Fool's Landing. I have the Sandbags Fool's Landing because it's going to come back up. And then because I only have three cards and need to draw five. Twilight Hollow goes. These two both get flooded. I've got two helicopter lifts. Um, so I'm going to have to move there. Do that. Helicopter them over here to restore that and I may as well keep them there for now if I use the one from the it doesn't really matter where I use them from two cards water so I just get rid of the earth one air ones because it's irrelevant really and they're both getting flooded twice because I'm going to draw them have to shuffle shuffle and then they're gone that's it game over that was that was harsh i like that i like the challenge but they were right at the bottom so there was no way i was going to win that those water rises one after another that was a good game i really enjoyed that i like the challenge of legendary um i find it really tricky to win on but that's kind of the idea of it i think elite is a very good level for not knowing which way it's going to go. Normal, novice is really, really easy and 
I would only play one game of that, I think, your first game. To be honest, you could probably start on normal and you'll be fine. Um, Elite is good. I think Elite's a nice balanced level, probably my favourite level. Does depend on your characters, so stronger characters like the pilot I find really strong. Um, I really like the explorer because I think they're balanced and they can do a bit of everything. Navigator not so good with two people. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. I will stop rambling now. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you do, please like and subscribe and comment below. Um, yeah, I'll be posting, if you look in the descriptions, there'll be linked to my Mythical Meeples and Patreon. So if you want to help support me, you can become a member or you can become a patron. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.